start the video today, which came from the library, I thought we could take a look at the beautiful fireplace that is in the library that I go to to get the magazines that I read, some of them, the Vogues. This tile around this fireplace is from Pubic Tile here in Detroit. This library is 100 years old, and these tiles are meant to depict the characters in the book, The Baby's Opera. Hello. I thought we could take a look at the March 2024 Vogue with Mucha. Prada on the cover. She is 74 years old. She's the youngest daughter of Mario Prada. She was born Maria, though. Mucha is her nickname. She is wearing one of her own pieces out of her own collection from 1988 for this vintage look. And there are a lot of other vintage looks in the magazine modeled by Gigi Hadid. I think there are 19 looks ranging from 1990s to current for both Prada and Mew. Mew, Mew. You just creation, Mew, Mew. This was from March. So that was Women's Month, and this is a lot of female designers are being spotlighted in the magazine. And they have a spring culture preview as well. See the backdrop of Italy in the background. First ad is from Louis Vuitton. Black and white. Same bag in these two. Let's see what. Uh, oh, it's the same outfit, too, isn't it? It is. This is the Go 14mm. It's $67.50. And it's featured in cream here. It also is in a red and black combination and a white and black combination. I think for the same price. So almost $7,000. Let's see what the fold up is. We've seen this outfit before that. Power jacket. A cityscape in the background with the large windows. This model is Ida Heiner in the color block. It's in the skirt too, in the last magazine that I read. You didn't see this outfit though. This is a monogram takeover tight for 490, a jewel button frock, jacket for $6,050. It is made of 100% silk in France. And again, that city backdrop. I just noticed her hair is kind of flying in the wind. She must be out on a balcony. Chanel. The flower patterns, and this is called being called street style. Handmade coat made of cotton, and it's thirteen thousand two seventy five. The matching pants are seven thousand. 
Here we have Riley Keel. I'll be saying her name wrong, but that's Priscilla Presley's granddaughter, Lisa Marie's daughter. These photos were taken in a, a villa in the south of France. She is a new ambassador for Chanel. If you go on their site to look at the beautiful florals for spring, you will notice for spring also that they have a lot of stripes. Lots. And here we have a black and pink pantsuit with a matching bag with the Chanel monogram on them. A lot of jewelry. And then the Camilla, Camellia flower that's always featured so prominently in the Chanel items. Couldn't find a lot of things on the Chanel site, like usual. <laughs> Couldn't find that matching bag. That was fascinating to me. There's a lot of jewelry on. So you can go to their site. As the uh, designers up and have, there's a little movie that you can watch with the new fashion. Maybe you'll have better luck finding some of that. And here we have Gucci. With the um, in coral, that beautiful red. These sling back pumps in that red are $1,100. These also come in a bubblegum pink. They have a very interesting combination of the red with this almost, almost neon lime green. This hoodie is an extra fine knit. It is sold out. A lot of this is sold out, but if you can find it, it started at 3900 There is an article in this magazine that we'll get to that talks about the rising cost of fashion, and I know just from doing these videos, fashion video with Vogue and Elle, that a lot of the very popular offerings when a new collection comes out, especially if a celebrity wears them out, they will sell out. And I had to think for a minute, I wonder if you obtain one of the more popular items, how much the value increases. And there's probably a market for that. That they probably only makes a certain number of things. I don't know what I'm talking about. I will disclose that too. But it would only make sense to me. So what else did I find? The shiny leather, leather short embossed. We see it here. These are sold out too. Um, they're $3,000. That small shoulder bag, that Jackie small shoulder bag in the Ancora Rosa uh, red is, um, I think that's what it's called. Maybe it's Rosa. That is 3200 and that is sold out. Those big GG earrings, G and G, I think that, let's see, oh, everybody has them on. They're sold out. If you can find them, they should be $700. That's what they retail for. These tank tops are silk and cashmere, and they are $1,700.
I don't know what they're calling that color. Probably not just white. It's probably cream. But it also comes in a camel color. So look at that color. We have Gucci again. These jackets are woven silk and they're $4,900. Actually, this one's woven silk, the shorter. They're both $4,900, but the short one has silk and that's a long coat, which is just a good basic staple, and that is made of all wool. These shorts are made of a techno gabardine, and they're thirteen fifty. And then you see the jacket bags again. Oh, you can't have the earring on. No earring. No. Yep. So she's got on a short fit tank top and a long coat. Beautiful, photographed by uh, David Sims. And here we have Dior. My husband and I have been watching The New Look. I think it's on Apple TV, I don't really know, about Christian Dior and Coco Chanel. It's interesting. We've enjoyed it. I think I've probably talked about it before if you watch my videos and I won't bore you with it. But check it out if you like fashion history or somebody's version of it. The backdrop for these photos, I'm pretty sure it's two. It is. It's just like a, maybe a fancy French hotel room in jewel tones, ruby, emerald, gold. And this campaign is all about simplicity and elegance. This white cotton poplin wing collar shirt is $22.50. And this, it looks like a, what we would call in the United States a jumper. I know a jumper in the UK is a sweater. We would call that kind of a jumper dress here. And it is floor length. It is black version wool. And it's flared at the bottom. And it's $4,400. Looks like maybe they're getting ready for a night out on the town. It's a teapot. They just kind of look like they're waiting. Couldn't find any of the dresses, but this cobwebby type knit in a flapper dress is a big look for Dior this spring. All in black. Look at the pretty wood floor. It's a lovely room. Very fancy. I love this Fendi campaign. Yes, okay. These little slippers I love. Like, I wouldn't be able to wear that. These are both the Filo, F I L O. The little slippers, as in, see, they have a little ankle, but not tie. 
back comes up and then you wrap that around your ankle. The little ballet slippers are 70, I'm sorry, they're $770. The pump is $1150. But I think those little slippers are the cutest things ever. They look comfortable. And does look pretty and with the dress. This dress is black cotton and silk. It's $3,100. It also comes in an or a pretty orange, bright, bright orange. This is a black viscose cardigan with the Fendi label on it, and it is $2,250. The skirt is inlaid leather, leather and it's $6,100, but I love the clouds. It's a beautiful photo. Bags. These are all the Celeria baguettes. Look at the stitching. It's all hand stitched. And we have them in two colors here. We've got different bags on the next page. These are see her feet and the gloves again are there's that orange that is part of this color scheme for this collection so that dress comes in about that type of an orange color but these are origami bags and they're very very cool if you want to look them up on the Fendi site there are probably YouTube videos showing how they convert. They have eight magnets on the top part there and they convert quite easily from a bucket bag to a shopper. And I know the mini is 1850. I don't know what size that is, this one. And then they're both adorned with fortune teller charms. And they're $500. And there's the cloud again. So colorful and bright for spring. And we have Zendaya for Bobari. They pulled out an expensive one for the ad, but but this is B zero one, and it's drawing in its inspiration from the famous amphitheater, the Coliseum. I mean, this is a granddaddy necklace. It's seventy four thousand dollars. It's seven point one nine carats. It also comes in rose gold. And she has different things on. This is probably, I mean, obviously that's one of the more expensive things in that line. But they have all a lot of different price points for B0. It's all still pretty expensive. But I love this top. Look at the black sequins and a V-neck. She looks lovely with her braids and her hair. Diana Ross, photographed by David Sims, longtime fan of the brand Saint Laurent, and now is their ambassador for the spring. She's 80 years old. Could not find this particular dress, but they have beautiful black basic black dresses on St. Laurent for spring. This Prada campaign is photographed by Willie Vanderpeer. It features 40 models in different shots, capturing their personality. And 
there are a lot of different separates. I think this is, yes, it's four pages. A lot of structured blazers. And layered textures. I did find this chiffon skirt. It's very reminiscent of that Gucci red, isn't it? The Encore red. That skirt is $1,700, just to give you an idea of the price point. For Prada, you can go on yourself and look. But it, when you do go on, at least this is what happened to me the other day. There is a video of Scarlett Johansson uh, running from a studio, like in New York City, like in a back alley with big sunglasses on like she's trying not to be seen with a bag. It might even be one of these bags. I don't think it is. It's not. But the big bags are definitely in. They, they said that it was coming. I mean, I'm all for it. Think of all the stuff you could put in there. I would lose literally everything. Be like it's in there somewhere, but anyway. This Galleria bag is $5,500, and it also comes in a sunny yellow. And there's that buckle bag. And I'm assuming these are large. You know, they come in different sizes. I mean, I would call them jumbo, but I don't know that Prada would use that word for anything. It's lovely photos. And then everyone... Well, not a, yeah, one, two, everybody in these photos have these caps on. I think everybody has these caps. I couldn't find it. So I'm pretty sure that's this beautiful caramel color for those buckle bags. It's a black and white photo, so we can't see it, but you can go on their site. They're very nice. Here we have Anna Ewers for Ralph Lauren. Introducing the RL888. Put hand cream on before I opened this magazine. I shouldn't have. But, so, this is a very modern and sleek handbag. And it, it's against a very rugged backdrop, isn't it? in the Old West, and she's dressed like a cow girl. This is a calf skin crossbody. It's $2,700, and they come in about 10 colors. A, one is called Blush, a beautiful green called Fern, a Fawn, a beautiful brown called Fawn, I'm sorry, and a bottle green, like, um, you know, the old-timey bottles glass bottles, that beautiful green. And here we have Anya Taylor-Joy for Tiffany. And this is Bird on Rock. This is a cushion cut tanzanite, 16.26 carat. in yellow, gold, and platinum. The construction, it's got a lot of different stones in it. The eye is a pink stone, I think. A lot of different cuts of diamonds to make up the bird. There she has it on there. And I'm pretty sure that this necklace, as photoed, is $88,000. My little sidetrack story on this, though, when I went to go look for this, we all know that this happens. I might have taken a Google lens photo of it, but the first thing that came up for me to buy was one, I think they might have even used this photo from TMU, and that one was only $2.00.
don't know how long it takes everybody to make a fake. Probably not long. I love this look from Mew Mew. Aren't they cute? They both have the same glasses on. The glasses are $585. And the last campaign, I think it was, was it like a librarian chic? I know I'd say we're at librarian, maybe going to, maybe a student. You're still a student chic. It's cute. I know that much. This is a mohair blues on jacket and it's $3,400. The checked shirt is $1,350. A lot of layering. Drawstring pants. And this is just so cute. With the shirt underneath, the striped shirt on top. They're calling this tobacco. There's another ad in here with a brown, that brown that is to, called tobacco. This t-shirt's $9.50. And the canvas bag with the Mew Mew on the front is $17.20. I tried to find this adorable skirt. I couldn't. I just love that outfit. And I love this too. Here we have Kaya Gerber again for Valentino. With more of the artisanal embroidery, crepe couture, just the prettiest dress you ever wanted to say. It looks like it was made for her. So there are four pages of ad with the same dress, but we see her lounging here. She is at the World Trade Center, Seven World Trade Center in New York. And she has the exact same thing on in the same bag. And then we have a close-up of her pretty face. This is 65% virgin wool, 35% silk. It's out of stock. It's 15500 And they're calling this ivory. This is the V logo Moon Mini Hobo Bag, Napa Leather. Two thousand three hundred ninety, and the rock stud wispy calf skin mule for about a thousand dollars. Look at that beautiful dress! Just look at it. I can't get enough. Here we have Dolce and Gabbana, and bl with black Cecily. Only two pages of it. Again, when I went to, this is the second time I'm seeing this in a magazine. When I went to go look at the offerings for spring, each of these models has these, the, the um, hat and tie scarf combination, but I can't find it on their site. Am I not meant to find it? This is photographed by Stephen Meisel. And these ladies do look beautiful, don't they? A lot of Chantilly lace. I did manage to find some things. When you go on this, when I went on their site the other day, they were mainly focusing on sunglasses because summer's coming. I don't see anybody wearing sunglasses here, though. This double breasted jacket is $35.45. And then that's the same jacket there. I didn't find the shorts. But if you wanted to wear the pant, they're $1,200. Wool. And they're flared. I said this in the other magazine. 
I don't want to seem like I'm repeating myself. But if this just, just isn't your thing for spring, even though it's very, very sexy, let's just, it's very Italian and it's very sexy. They've got some lovely florals. Dolce and Gabbana for spring. Very beautiful dresses. Here we have the Omega Mini Trezor. So this is a compact, slender, 26 millimeter case in stainless steel and uh, featuring a bright enamel dial. I looked it up and as pictured, this is as pictured in here, 4,700. It comes in what they're calling moonshine gold to the face, and that is 8,800. Here we have the Bottega Veneta Spring 2024 offerings, photographed in Japan at a playground. Looks like a mushroom, doesn't it? Looks like maybe an apartment complex or condominiums in the background. This is a soft twill jacket. Wool for $2,100. And the cape is 33 They're calling the color milkweed. This is a large Andiamo bag. You'll have to look up the price. I could not find this exact woven check like that. In brown and tan. They had a lot of them in a lot of different colors, but I couldn't find that exact same one. And here we have Ferragamo. She has the same shoe on in both of these ads. This might even be six pages. Nope, it's not. It's four. The hand-painted heel matches those beads, the same colors. And they are thirteen fifty. And this coat seems like she's kind of in somebody's rec room or maybe an office. This coat is made of linen and it's forest green. And you'll have to go on the site too fully appreciate what it can do. You can wear it as a regular coat or they will show you how to get this cape effect. You undo portions of it. I love the color though. There's a hug bag there. I think they're $3,400 too. This is called light blue and it comes in at least 10 other colors. At least. I did find this dress. It's layered viscose and polyester. It's $2,900. And that's the Fiamma crossbody bag for $2,500. You see her reflection in the mirror. Pretty. Green shoes, that's the same green as the gold. It's almost a Kelly green. Burberry. For spring. And this is a warped houndstooth that is featured 
very prominently in a lot of the offerings from Burberry. This is the tar coat. It has the effect. I think everything she has on has that warp tones to the fact. The car coat is a silk blend. It's $37.50. This trouser is a wool blend for $16.50. The sweater is $15.50 with a wool neck collar. This quilted bomber jacket, nylon, but they have finished it for a soft finish. They're calling this collar soap. And it is $21.50. Here we have Max Mara with their utility glamour focus for spring. And this is a tribute to the Women's Land Army from the 1940s. That is why I look it there are some very interesting features in with in this clothing, but I have an aunt who purchased something for another aunt be, that is an avid gardener. It is a an apron for her to wear outside while she's gardening that has deep pockets so she will bring her cell phone outside in case she uh, can't get up or something happens out there and she can call us. But the minute I saw this bag, it reminded me of that apron that one of my aunts bought another one of my aunts because it has those pockets. They all have the same sandal on. These sandals are $9.45. This is the color that they're calling tobacco. And it's a very cute little work suit. It's a jumpsuit. It's cotton. It, they're calling this cotton drill workwear jumpsuit, and it's ten ninety. The tote bag is canvas and leather, and it's sixteen ninety. She's got on a ribbed silk tank top for six ninety five, and this color they are calling mustard. And it's cotton canvas. It's oversized. It is $17.90. So this coat, though, is not so utilitarian, is it? She looks like she's ready to be taken out on the town, but cheer up. She doesn't look real happy, does she? She'll have fun when she gets there, I think. It's an organza trench coat, and it is about $3,200. It's very pretty. Everybody has black toes, I think. Black toenails. Not black toes. Black toe nail polish. Here we have Lashana Lynch in Ferragamo. Top and skirt. And that is photographed by Norma Jean. Norman Jean, not Norma Jean. Norman Jean Roy. I love the colors of this. Red, the beautiful, beautiful dark skin against that white. Watch. And then a black and white dog. It's lovely. So a single dot marks the spot Swiss made since 1881, Bold Evolution 2.0 Ceramic. And it is $795. Here we have Cindy Crawford for Donna Karen. Well, Cindy's not the only model that has teamed up to... Well, Donna Karen is... Um, Relaunching the, um, the label, I guess. This label was started in eight, 1984. And these are all photographed by Annie Leibovich. If you go on the Donna Curran site, 
and look at these clothes. Which I didn't really do. I looked at the medals. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna go through. It's very reasonably priced. In women we trust. So here we are, going back in time a little bit to March, celebrating women. Everything. Well, first of all, if you order anything. The shipping is free, over $100. And the highest priced item that I found was not clothing, it was were bags. And it was $400. It was, a, you know, a, a handbag. The clothing, I mean, compared to what we have seen, where things are generally in the thousands, it's not going to be so with this. They're all wearing black. I might bungle some names, but this model is Leah, L-I-Y-A, Kabeda. She's from Ethiopia. Linda Evangelista, Cindy Crawford, Carolyn Murphy. And if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. Shalom Harlow from Canada, Amber Valletta, Carly Klaus, and Iman Hanan, Dutch. Model. I'm sorry, I should have done it this way. I didn't mean to leave anybody out. This is kind of paying homage to Donna Corrine's Seven Easy Pieces. Um, not theory, but her um, mantra for clothing started off with seven easy pieces. And I really think that you will be able to build a beautiful wardrobe with her relaunch. I love this. And she's got the figure for it. It's a very pretty dress. And a trench coat. Here we have another very bright green. It's almost like a gecko green, isn't it? These are made of satin. They're calling this fern. It also comes in an, a beautiful orange, like so many things this spring do. This is 1120. This mule. They got their name there. So this is all from Nordstrom. And it is a few pages. Nordstrom's pretty easy to navigate designer-wise. I think that there's a section you just click down. Find the they've got quite a list of designers. Find the designer you want. This is a bougie tape wool blend blazer. They're calling this mint. Dries Van Noten. It is $22.50. This is Tom Ford. Look at this dress. The combination of her hair, skin, the dress, it's just perfect. This is a laser fringe cocktail mini dress. It is made of 100% polyester, but there is a leather strip on top. It is $59.80. This is a cage crop embossed ankle strap stiletto for $17.90. This is J.W. Anderson. I want these. I, I, I can't wear these. And if I wore this, I think that... Um, well, if they had it in my size, yeah, I don't know what would happen. It's lovely, though. I could wear these, though, and I want them. They're $700. They are a crochet moccasin loafer. The sole is rubber. 
most of the outside is cotton and then there's some uh, amount of lamb suede like that's probably lamb suede 90% cotton, 10% lamb suede is what it said. And I want them. That's all we need to know. Givenchy. Another lacy, beautiful evening dress. Black hair, black gloves, black bag, beautiful black dress. This evening dress is satin. It is $9,700. This bag is cut out bird bag for $3,500. This coat is floor length and it's made of satin and silk. They're calling this color butter. And it's $5,900. This bag they're calling the color soft yellow. And it is a medium, I think, vo vo bag, V O Y O U bag. If you go on the Swarovski site. They have their spring offerings. The pop-up. If you are a baseball fan, they have baseball caps with the team logos in Swarovski crystals. I don't know how much they are. I thought that was pretty cool, though. I know they have at least the Yankees. Um, they probably have others, too. This is all plated a rhodium. And it's um, in kind of an infinity mark, isn't it? Hyperbola. The rings are about 150 They have earrings for about 120 see the necklace they always have a lot to look at yeah hyperbola right there Swarovski hyperbola I can imagine that really catches the light so here we have another department store offering their designer wares And this is Kate, the brand, K-H-A-I-T-E, the Zelma Bishop Sleeve Dress for $2,600. It is 100% silk. Many tattoos. And here we have Kara Delavine. There she is, a little doggy. Big. This is for MCM Worldwide. Introducing the first MCM Maverick. It looks like she has the whole collection, even a key fob. Here's the table of contents. Here's Devin Garcia in JW Anderson with her sister River and Mother Jenny. Mother Jenny is a Michael Kors collection. We can't really see what she's wearing. There is a feature with them later in Miami. We have Chanel Coco, Mademoiselle. you stick with me till the end of the magazine, which this is a long one, Chanel has created some jewelry 
that is based on the Chanel number no. five bottle. We will see one of the necklaces. They're not for sale. I mean, they would be probably like a million dollars that we, um, in a museum. Vogue.com slash shopping. I've seen this. I think they use the exact same page, but that's okay. You can go to that. I know I've looked that dress up many times and talked about it already. I love this. Couldn't find the beautiful top. The model's beautiful. Chloe. Well, this is Jessica Miller. And they have a new creative director, as does the next page. It's kind of a thing, but there are a lot of billowy blouses at Chloe. It's very pretty. This is the creative designer's first cam new campaign, Chloe Portraits. And they're obviously in Paris. The Eiffel Tower is in the back. Here we have McQueen um, with their new creative director, Sean Rooker. And this is kind of a teaser for things to come. We have Deborah Shaw in an ancient pine forest wearing kind of a scary mask, huh? She's got a pretty outfit on. The spring line for McQueen has something very pretty not scary though if you go to their site it, this is definitely attention getting but the item featured so prominently that's so beautiful is red rose they have dresses with one single huge red rose on them go check it out you won't be scared they're just teasing they're being dramatic they're leading up to something, and we will stay tuned to see what that something is. Here we have the editor's letter by Anna Wintour talking about all the wonderful women featured in this edition. She talks about Mucha Prada being a role model having an understanding in women's fashion about how women actually lead their lives and how she admires her for that. And she discusses all the, her different experiences with her and how she admires her so much. Women dressing women, a simple idea and a powerful one too. She discusses all the other women designers that, some of whom we'll see. Here we have Hermes. We've seen this ad before. It's cool. It's a horse's leg with a, I think, female hand featuring a Shen Dankra Shen Dankra bracelet. This is Cavalier, Cavalier jewelry and it has it looks like items that you would care for horses with. This means anchor chain, literally. Their jewelry is made in France. This bracelet sterling silver. Now I'm looking at it. I don't know that I have the right. One of these is $1,700. I see that there are two. And I couldn't find this. It's a pretty simple ad. to look like a rope. Here we have Loewe, Loewe. And a squeeze bag. This is photographed by David Sim. Yeah, the lamb skin. The 
this one has a chain strap. They're calling this dark burgundy. And this one is oak. These squeeze bags for a small, it's 3,900. And for a medium, it's 44. And we all know that Boeva has their lovely bags, but what really drew my attention was this. And it is a chunky wool cape, a chunky knit. I couldn't find this exact one on the site, but they are literally capes. They don't have sleeves. Some of them are floor length. And they've got these gigantic buttons that, it's, it's a lovely ad. And you can see it with the antique table. And the model. They've got a few things with that chunky knit, though. And I would never get out of it if I wore it. I'm just kidding. Here we have Vittoria Soretti in Capri, Italy for Michael Kors collection. White outfit, black outfit. They're both dresses. There's something else they have in common. They're both hand embroidered now that I'm looking at this. This has a keyhole feature in the front floor length, so I guess we curl it again. It's hand embroidered sequin floral lace. It is about $6,000. They are calling this Optic White. It's seventy-six percent cotton, but don't worry, it's lined with silk. And the bag is the Jewelry Large Bucket Bag for $2,800. There is also in a color called Suntan. So that, like I said, this is also hand embroidered. It's a sequined floral lace baby doll dress for $39.50. The lining is silk. The sandal... The sandals, uh, plural, I couldn't, I didn't find these exact specific ones, but I would say it's safe to say they're, they're under a thousand dollars. Look at how tall that is compared to those boats in the foreground. I don't think I've ever seen an ad for this graph. This is Tilda's bow. This jewelry company has created these magnificent pieces of jewelry. This is the classic diamond drop pendant. Oop, there's a diamond that drops down, and it's $26,500. It's meant to capture the fluidity of a silk bow, and they show us a piece of a ribbon there to emulate that. Here we have Vivian Rona for Jimmy Choo. The shoe is two-tone. I thought it was blue and black. I think it's technically blue and navy, I think. But this is the AZ, AZ, maybe, AZIE 85. It is photographed in Ibiza. So another ocean backdrop. The shoe's about a thousand dollars. She has a very casual outfit of just jean shorts and a black top, two tops. Layer. The bag is called Avenue Quad. It's about 2000 It's a wonderful combination, isn't it? Here we have an ad for Karate's Paris. 
This is Sydney Sweeney. Citric acid and glazing. This is for hair. I might have said skin. Remove calcium buildup. Might that be from water? And reconnect broken links between keratin chains. That is a bold claim. I wonder if it really works. People that made the magazine. Then here we have Jennifer Lawrence for Longine. Dolce Vita. Elegance is an attitude. The Dolce Vita is a whole line. This is one of the fancier ones. It's probably a few thousand dollars, but they have some that are plain with no diamonds, with just leather straps. They're about 1500 Kate Winslet is also on the, their site now as a spokesperson. I didn't know that. If I did, I had forgotten. We have some things to come here. There's an interesting article on a visual artist. We get to see some of his art. Devin Garcia in Miami with her family at Mucha. Here we have Laura Pion. Here we have Hallie and Chloe Bailey for Pandora. A lovely ring. A beautiful black and white photograph. And look at the lovely necklace. Earrings. Sounding the alarm. This is an article by Alexis Okiwo about activist Nyamat Amadi. And they talk about the one year old now war in Sudan where two generals began a struggle for power. You know it's about the one year anniversary The activist featured fled the 2003 Darfur genocide. If you have the opportunity to get this issue of Vogue, it's a wonderful article. Unfortunately, in the news, we have a couple other wars, at least, huh, that dominate the headlines and Niamat is raising awareness of the conflict there and the suffering. She is actively helping people flee. She's raising awareness. The war in Sudan, overlooked by many, has become a humanitarian crisis. Sudanese photographer and filmmaker Hassan Kamil captures life on the ground. We will see some more photos coming. He had for Baccarat Rouge 540. I wondered what that smelled like. And it is Amber and Moody with saffron and jasmine hints. Here is the activist that we're talking about. I'm sure I'm Let's call her Ms. Amadi. I don't know about the, the first name. It's very pretty. Niamat. She grew up in Darfur with a large family and they farmed. We had gardens full of fruits and vegetables. My childhood was come home from school, throw down your bag and run to the gardens. This is advertising a concert that has passed. 
but it was something to um, benefit a food, food um, banks. Love Rocks NYC. It's a beautiful landscape in Sudan. A hilltop view. Liz Amati did return to Darfur uh, three years ago after being away 16 years. Her voice becomes soft when she talks about her trip. It was emotional and it was hard and it was beautiful all at the same time. Again, try to pick up oh, this phobe. I know that my eyes were opened to that situation. And I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about it. Access. Something funny happened. In, well, it's not funny. Yes, it is. Something that made me think of this. Here we have two models, Sasha and Lily. Um, this they're they're posing in John Galliano era Dior. John Galliano is also in this magazine featured. There's a movie about him. We'll get to it. His era, Dior, is highly sought after. This is photographed in 2006. But my mother and I, of course, were at an estate today, an estate sale. And my mother was really looking at the clothing because it was all her size. And it was, it was high quality clothing. My mother bought a lot of it. But a young man came in. I was sitting on the bed in this person's bedroom waiting for my mom to, it was a large closet. My mom went through everything. But this young man came in and he said, is there any Chanel in there to my mother in this closet? And there wasn't. It was mostly like, um, like lands and clothes and higher end things you might get from Kohl's and stuff. But I, it made me think of this, like they're, and he was with another guy, they're looking for these little, little treasures that in, in an old estate would be a place to find them in a home where they would have the money to, buy such clothing they get specific about and I won't be able to find it um, like this the John Galliano era Dior that's one of them one of them's Marc Jacobs but they feature a couple um, people who, you know, they're making a living doing this. They track down these fashions. They are high, they're highly desired because they're rare at this point. And they're reselling them. The excitement came this person is Johnny Valencia, one of them, the founder of Pachuca Vintage. Well, a socialite, she happened to be French Lebanese, but the socialite was selling 252 pieces of her archive of clothing, and everybody was all abuzz. It would be a very interesting thing to do, wouldn't it? If you, um, are knowledgeable, you would have to be able to spot fakes. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. This is Lagos. Isn't it pretty? It's very spring. It's very pink. They're calling this pink caviar. It's very 
just lovely and it looks lovely on her the ring is about 1500 the earring about 1100 they have these st sterling silver like uh, beads almost as a lot of the composition but the pink part is ceramic so pink caviar see pink's not your thing. If you go on Lago's site, they have the same jewelry and look at all the different variations. There are certainly a lot of different bracelets. They have a royal blue, so imagine that but with a royal blue and they're calling that ultramarine. Black, of course, and white basics. You could even stack the different colors. It's pretty. And I think it's the first time I've ever seen it. So they're going to allude to a couple of the things I was talking about, like what makes it, what combinations of designers working for certain houses indicates value because maybe they didn't work there long and there aren't many pieces. So this is one thing, anything by Vivian Westwood, but I think I and Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel would be another thing. And you know what? That guy asked me, is there any Chanel in there? I said, I don't think so, honey. You're going to have to wait for my mom to get out of there. Sarah Burton, while working for Alexander McQueen, get the magazine and read it. If this is something you want to go get into, this might be the first thing you want to read. But I have to talk about Victoria Beckham. This is a huge four-page ad. It's not for her clothing, although you can certainly go on her website and look at her gorgeous clothing. But she has these fragrances, you may know. I really didn't, I'll be honest with you. Look at those arms. These fragrances, are there four? I don't know how many she has in total, but we're going to talk about three of them. These all are named to, in, to capture certain parts of her life. Eras in her life, let's say. Okay? The first one is called Portofino 97, meaning Portofino 1997. And of course, she's in love. She's in love with David Beckham and they're in Portofino. And the scent is described as luxurious, sexy, and just summer with David Beckham. When I looked these up, if you did want to buy one, just do yourself a favor and read the comments because people really take their fragrances seriously and they're giving their honest opinion. So this is when, I mean, I really enjoyed reading them. So this is her luxurious, sexy summer with David. So maybe we could buy this and put it on and, you know, maybe we could feel like that too. Beautiful black and white photo. What is this one? What is this one called? Oh, <laughs> Sweet 302, I think. So this is in Paris, and this is alluding to a whirlwind weekend of romance in Paris with, with David Beckham, let's just say it. So if you wanted to smell like that, capture the essence of it. This is black cherry, leather, and tobacco. Meant to capture those whirlwind weekends, baby. Now this is sunny. It's, it's, it's a very suggestive photo, but I mean, they're, they're trying to sell, they're trying to sell something here, right? 
We'll forgive them. They got to do what they got to do. This is San, I don't know how to say that, Isidro Drive. And this documents the 2007 move of the then family. Because that was the product of all this whirlwind romance. Marriage and family. California, son, happy, um, and David Beckham. There you go. This is Omar Apollo, Grammy nominee. It's cute. He was born to Mexican parents who immigrated to Indiana. He learned how to play guitar on YouTube. <laughs> Well, Omar, you sure are cute, and I hope that you are successful. So this is a lush blend of R&B and hip-hop. And I've never heard of him. Working-class Mexican immigrants from Guadalajara. He was born in 97. He's my younger son's age. And he says, making music isn't easy. That's why I've dedicated a lot of my life to it. He had his debut album in 2022. And here's a very springtime looking Olay ad with pink floral and a pink ribbons almost and a cherry. Mm, pretty model. Rose and cherry cream. Oh, that sounds lovely. I got a little obsessed with this. This is in San Francisco and it is a symphony mashup between Cartier and Scriabin which alludes to Alexander Scriabin who was a composer who died young he died or er, he died at, at 40 I think and he was alive in the early 1900s So this is going to be a fusion of live music and fragrance. They have set, he was born in Russia, and he wrote Prometheus, the Poem of Fire. So Prometheus will unfold at the Davies Symphony Hall in San Francisco, and it will involve not only color, but scent as well. Three distinct fragrances will be released at key moments throughout the performance. Isn't that just something else? I wonder how much it costs to get in. I wonder if it's sold out. And I think that at least two of them are never going to be able to, they're not going to be available for sale. They will be exclusive to the performance, but I thought that was the most fascinating thing I ever heard of. And they do talk about smell o vision, which maybe I've never been to one of a, a smell o vision movie, but it's it's combining performance and scent. And I'm just gonna be a stage mother here for a minute and talk about the play my son was in over the winter, which was cabaret, but they used smoke. Uh, well, vapor at different parts in the play. This was a community theater. It wasn't a big production value, a budget. But they definitely let off a certain odor, S smell. And it was pleasant. And I'm thinking of one of the performances we were at. And it was older people in front of us. And the lady said at one of the moments that they let the vapor out, Oh, that smells good. So they would have scenes where trains were in the train stations and stuff. So for dramatic effect. This is the Palm Beach Collection. The original, the one, the only. Florida's most stylish vacation destinations. The palmbeaches.com. Here's the theater. San Francisco's Davies Symphony Hall. It is over. It was only for three days. It was at the beginning of March. I tried to look up to see how much it is to get in. 
This is red hot. They're talking about the red lip, Mrs. Adat Akash. She is wearing Valentino Beauty, a Dolce & Gabbana jacket and Bulgari earrings. They talk about the power of the flame red lip. Dior's new Rouge Dior collection has 24 different shades. Many people, well, women could be people, actually consider a red lip their version of nude. I think that that's true. That was a quote from, the, from Dior's creative director. There are many ads for Body by Victoria. New technology, endless comfort. There's a nude color there, and that may be what these tobacco colors are. What is with the price of clothes? Are you reeling from sticker shock in a way that seems new? Emily Petrarca is here to tell you you are not alone. Well, the price of a lot of things have gone up, and designer wears... Are included in that. We all know that when we really go buy, buy anything, I'm assuming we all have to buy things. We all have to buy food, unless you live on a farm. And she does. She talks about as a purchaser, and she has interviewed others. Maybe you're uh, amongst them. The prices have skyrocketed. Becky Malinsky, who is a former newspaper editor, uh, who now writes a shopping newsletter, says she started to be extra horrified about five years ago. The prices had seemed to have reached sort of a fever pitch, and she said, what is going on? Chanel typically reviews the prices of its handbags twice a year, as do many similar companies. And that process generally results in a small increase. But their classic quilted flat bag now retails for more than $10,000, nearly twice as much as it cost five years ago. Now, Let's think back to that young man that I ran in today, into today. There may be something to this. Let me talk about, they have a lot of numbers with the price jumps and they're, they're double for handbags, shoes, sunglasses, coats, dresses. To alleviate the feeling of sticker shock and of course to offset costs, I will go down rabbit holes on the real, real, and stock items until they drop to a price that feels more affordable. Or you could go to estate sales. I don't know about so much garage sales. I don't know. I love this little story. I, I won't dwell on it. It's short, but it really touched my heart. This is a Welsh artist. Tony DeJesus, who participated in a show, Queer Reflections, in a art gallery. He was, he's a Portuguese-British artist. There was one problem. He's excited. He's been chosen to display his wares at a fancy show. His dad didn't know that he was gay. And he decided to use this show as an opportunity through his art, come out, come out, like some people have to eventually, that have been closeted. He decided to come out to his father through art. And this is Amor Perfetio. It can be purchased through Jay Loman. And this is a floral teacup that he made from a an earlier collection. But he used the pansies. 
it was one clue, I guess, which it has a connotation with the queer community. And also these raised features as well. Father was a taken aback when he first saw it, but that reticence soon, soon turned into acceptance. I just thought it was so sweet. And I love these little pansies. I love them. So the amor perfetio is Portuguese for pansy and perfect love. And my brows are pretty pink, like a blush. Here we have Peter Thomas Rupp, Water Drench, Clinical Skin Care. Up to 72 hours of hydration, even after cleansing. Here's Georgina Rodriguez for Guess. If you want to go on the Guess site, they are, I think it said, festival ready. And there were a lot of cute clothes geared towards the summer festival color concert festival. And I'd say these jeans fit the bill. I think it said festival bound. This is a lace denim flare pant, low stock though, and they're $300. So if you want them, get them. I love her nails. <laughs> Perfect. Cole Hahn. Reimagine tradition. We see this lady in a long white dress with loafers. And then maybe a more traditional skirt and top with white socks and loafers. I don't think I've Okay, it's Cole Haan backslash Vogue. I don't think I've ever seen a Cole Haan ad and a Vogue. And I didn't know much about them. Most everything on their site that I saw, I didn't go on that, and I didn't find any of these shoes. But most of what I saw was under $200. Here is the article on John Galliano. Here he is with dog, his little dog. Where, where is he? Is this at a restaurant or is it his home? Oh, it's this is in 2002, 22, I'm sorry. And that's at his home. And it's beautiful. And this film... I, I would like to watch it. And I told my husband the other day, you know, my husband likes fashion. I'm just going to put that up. He probably likes fashion more than I do. He, I said, you know, Jimmy, would you watch this with me if I can find it? Um, you can only right now in Michigan where I live see this in the movie theater. Like, I think a theater in Ann Arbor is showing it somewhere else. So we'll have to wait. But the, Kevin McDonald has made this documentary. He is admittedly not a, a fashion guy. He directed a film about, uh, it's called One Day in September. And it is about the murder of the Israeli athletes in at the Olympics in 1972. And John Galliano is um, coming back out. Something happened. It's well publicized. He's on camera on people's um, phones, mobile phones. This is about 10, 10, 12 years ago. And it's not very nice. He is, I think he might have been drunk. Oh, but it was um, almost like social suicide. And he got fired. And the 
documentary is described as, um, how did they put it? First of all, the movie is called High and Low. It says John was incredibly open. He didn't want the film to be depressing, not for his own sake, but for other addicts. The way he looks at the incident that happened at La Pearl is that while it's the thing that destroyed his life, it also saved his life. So whatever we take from the film, that's what he wants people to see, that there is life on the other side, and there has to be. He's got a story to tell, and I, I would like to watch it. Free pe FP movement, free people movement, and they have some lovely colored exercise wear, short shorts, almost in candy colors, and candy colored shoes too. And then, boop, <laughs> I think you've already seen them because I flipped forward, stand out, never still. A great tagline, isn't it? So high and low, we'll have to check back on that. I'll watch it and then I'll make a video and I won't shut up about it. This exhibition is the work of Beatrix Potter. And I would love to go see it. It is at Manhattan at the Morgan through June 9th, if you live in NYC. It's Beatrix Potter, Drawn to Nature. Her new exhibition traces how a love of nature grew in Beatrix Potter. She grew up in England's Lace Lake District, not Lace District, Lake District. And she would walk through the woods with her sketchbook. And here she is with her dog. Her dog was Spot. Which led to her drawing the tail of Peter Rabbit and all the different animals. The only one I can think of is Jemima Puddle Duck. <laughs> Quick change, the promise of color adaptive beauty products. <laughs> Your most flattering shade is just a chemical reaction away. This is all about products that react with your skin's pH to create another color. They mention the rosy lip enhancer from Hermes Beauty. Dior has a lip glow. Once Dior started doing this type of thing, it, they say it gave it more of a credibility. Fenty Beauty added one match sticks color adaptive cheek, cheek and lipstick. It's in the shade of Strawberry Pop. And Rihanna says she loves its ease. This is America Gonzalez. And it says here, most pH powered makeup uses red 27, which is a dye that shifts to a sheer red tint on contact. Secret whole body. I see this commercial every day when my husband and I at General Hospital together our little hour of junk TV, I guess. I don't know. We don't really even watch it. But I've never bought this. It seems like a cool idea. They make all sorts of things. A spray, a stick, and it looks like a lotion. The end of glitter. Or are we just at the beginning of a new era of microplastic-free, perfectly healthy-to-eat sparkle? The 
beautiful china dish with a sparkly baked potato and some sour cream in the middle. What is this all about? Well, it's a good thing really because, oh, there's my stomach. Um, I don't buy glitter. I've bought glitter. I think if I had little girls or little granddaughters or something, glitter might play a more important role in my life. But glitter, as we know it in the United States, is plastic. It's microplastic. The EU has banned microplastic glitter. This has prompted a wave of re reformulation in how glitter is used in cosmetics, which I don't buy. My mom bought me nail polish that has glitter in it for Christmas. It's just not my thing. I'm passing it along. But, um, you know, this is apparently on people's minds that we need to do away with these microplastics. So a microplastic is a bit of plastic that is less than five millimeters. So that's pretty small. And they're finding it in everything. They're finding it in tap water, breast milk, fruit, rain, everywhere. But people still want glitter. There is a, there is a, well, there's kind of a solution. There is a Vaseline ad. The solution is they have made glitter out of, let me try to find the current, the, what it's composed of. Made it out of mica. A group of 37 silicate mit minerals found in granite and other rocks. They put dextrose in it as well, rice protein and food dye. That's for the edible glitter that you may have seen on a dessert, maybe. But this is the scary thing, too. I just named off all the things that microplastics are in. They're also in people's blood, probably mine and maybe yours, and, and placentas of babies. It's crazy. Well, we can do what we can. The thing about mica, though, is that... That's not fraught with problems, too, because that industry, they have to mine it, and it's been historically plagued with humanitarian violations, mostly stemming from illegal child labor. So I'm just going to say this. Maybe just the solution is we don't. Glitter. I don't know. We have to find a solution. Fancy Feast ads, new to Vogue, at least in the last few issues, but I'm there for it, and so is my cat. This is her thing right here. Fancy Feast with gravy. She's old, and she has hardly few teeth, hardly any teeth, and she gets what she wants. What can I say? Here's an ad for Zealman, Frown Lines, Redefined, Smart Toxin. This is Tobias Menzies starring in Apple TV's series Manhunt, and it's based on the best-selling book about the search for Abraham Lincoln's assassin. It sounds very good. He was in The Crown, and he was in You Hurt My Feelings, starring, well, starring along with Julia Louis Dreyfus. That sounds good. What is this? I want this. Look at her hair. Look how pretty. All those braids. Her earrings. Dove scalp hair therapy. I need it. Mr. Menzies is attracted to roles that conceal depths. There's a certain magic about that. This is a quote. Part of 
the maths is that there is more on the inside than on the outside. Here he is in his new series. No, this is in the hunt. The new series is Manhunt. So here's the best of spring 2024. There, this is a big ad. It's in every Vogue. And I'm, I sort of cheekily make fun of maybe a couple of the things. I don't mean to because, you know, just because I don't want it doesn't mean you don't want it. But they've switched this up. And like, look at these cute little dryer balls. This is friendssheepwool.com. They're adorable. They're bumblebees. You put them in the dryer. High grade Manuka honey. We've seen that before, that dragon. Don't sink. Grass walkers, flexible strips placed at the bottom of your heels keep you from shrinking at that outdoor party or funeral. That's the only place where I have, that has ever happened to me when I had heels on. I hate to be morbid, but it's the truth. And isn't this pretty? This is Tay Collection. Oh, it's cashmere. Starting at $50 at quince.com. Archie's Arch Support Slime. Pro Lash, The Secret to Easy Lashes. Pepper Spray, I mean, who can, you might need that. I don't know. They've switched it up a little bit. I don't see that LED belly belt that I'm not convinced on. Tangier Dreams. With its fleet of exciting cultural hubs and smart new hotels, the storied North African city has never been more inspiring to visit. And I kind of browsed through this. I want to go here. I want to go here. Like, I, this is right where I would go. And I'm browsing through, and it says Yves Saint Laurent and his partner. I think the guy's name was Pierre. Yep. They made their home there. Yves Saint Laurent died in Paris. He had a brain tumor, so he didn't die in Tangier, but I thought, oh, I wonder where his villa was, you know. If I ever go there, I'm going to go stock it. Well, this is his villa, and you can stay there. So, if you look at it, that is the bed, one of the bedrooms. That is the tea that they'll put out for you. Villa Mabruka. I can dream, can't I? It's probably hot. Well, I know it's hot. If you're an absolutely fabulous fan, which I've seen every episode one million times, they go to Morocco and they bring the daughter. But they say you're not going to be prepared for the heat to her, and the minute they get there, they faint because <laughs> it's so hot. The Run Through with Vogue podcast. Check it out if you are a podcast listener. Storied Lands, a range of backdrops provide the grounding for spring fiction. Lisa Cole's Memory Piece. Sounds good. Moving, strikingly evocative exploration of New York's art, tech, and activism scenes through the decades. This one's very interesting. On the Tobacco Coast by Christopher Tillman. It's elegant, boisterous, and moving new novel. It's at a faded estate on Maryland's Chesapeake shore, and it's a family gathered for a 4th of July weekend. Ellipses, a novel by Jessica Lawrence. Oh, it's her debut. It charts the course of a mentor-mentee relationship 
as toxic as it is intoxicating. One of the players is a magazine writer and that Megan Nolan, Ordinary Human Failings. It's in the 90s. It sounds like I would really like it. So, foreign landscape, no cell phones, multicultural perspective. The Green family at the center of this gripping new novel has settled into insular life on a London housing estate, having fled Ireland after their daughter became pregnant. Circling the family is a hungry young tabloid reporter. It sounds good. Help Wanted by Adele Waldman. It takes place at a box store of declining fortunes in upstate New York. Oh yeah, I... It's about working at a store. It sounds very good. Waldman is unsentimental about her low-wage protagonists, and she's mesmerizing on the details of their work. The monotony of it. I didn't go to this. Condé Nast store. It's prints from the world's most iconic photographers. This is by David Marlowe. It, this is from Architectural Digest from 2017. A bunch of cactuses and a, and a bright blue sky in the back. M M Manolo Blahnik. Pink and blue patent leather. This is Tona. About $1,100. I might have gotten them mixed up. I don't think I did. They're both around $1,100. One is Tona, T-O-N-A-H, and one is Harala. That pink and blue is striking together, isn't it? And then that's yellow and orange. Reddish orange. This is so pretty. I couldn't find any of it. There is a dress on Bal Balmain very similar to this but it's not off the shoulder i was thinking is that the dress she's just wearing it off the shoulder this is gazelle function and i never know if i'm saying the name right and that's pretty too the bag i did find is the jolie madame you can pre-order i didn't find this black and white one about eleven hundred dollars the clothes are beautiful. The appliques and the combination of that green with the polka dots. The greens are wonderful this spring, aren't they? The blue backdrop and pink. Pretty, 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 pretty. Sink a set in a New York City. Pretty dress. This is the Bow Classic. Graphic floral pita p e e t a dress. It's five hundred dollars. They're calling this serene sky and fresh lime. It's made of a hundred and a hundred percent polyester. The flowers are pretty in the back. Ground that purple with the green is lovely. Fresh face model. This also comes in navy and ivory. Fabiana Philippe, couldn't find this. This is OK Kaya, wearing Spring and Summer 2024. Go to their site and try to find it. This is captured by Drew Vickers. The only thing that I could find that is even remotely like this is a bag. 
that has that fringe. I mean, that's a pretty distinctive look. Maybe this was just made for the ad. And I'm not familiar with this company. I've, I think it's the first time I've seen their ad in a fashion magazine. But go check them out, Fabiana Filippi. Del Corin. This is by Daniel Del Corin. He used to work for Gucci. A lot of his work was inspired by John Galliano, I read. So if this is couture and ready to wear, couldn't find any of it. These things specifically, but they have a lot of things on their site. And good for them, a lot of it is sold out. So they must have just a few things, or maybe even one of some of the items. That was my experience looking through there. I invite you to go to their site and check it out for yourself. London and New York. Balenciaga, Kim Kardashian. All these handbags in the background. I don't know that this is her closet. It might be. Great big handbag. the different colors. I can never really find anything when I go look on the Balenciaga site. I never have luck finding sp specifically the, the items. A little bit of lace at the bottom of the dress there. Very edgy. Look at all the things hanging from her purse. Maybe you'll have more luck than me. Is this another vintage outfit? It probably is. She is photographed at the Prada Foundation in Venice. I'm interested in the lives of people, says Mucha. It's not designing, it's putting together personalities, histories, pieces of life, both good and bad. It's a wonderful article, if you can pick the magazine up. Fashion is one third of my life, says Ms. Prada. Together with her husband, they home the Prada group the global luxury brand. They also have a stake in church's shoes. I didn't know that. So fashion is one third. The second third is her culture foundation. The Prada Foundation has become a leading proponent in contemporary art. And the third is, of course, her family and her friends. They all overlap, and I try to make my life useful. Doc, she has a doctorate in science. She studied mime for five years. She's a former member of the Italian Communist Party. She's led a colorful life. Here we have Gigi and all these different fashions. What do you think? All throughout the years with Prada, and some of it's... Uh, well, maybe not. I thought some of it was Mew Mew, but that is, isn't it? Clockwise from top, from, so let's call it like a clock. Fall 2007, fall 2017 Prada. Here's the Mew Mew. Spring 2008 Prada. No, Mew Mew, and then Prada. Spring 2009. This is all Prada. 2013, 2011, 2009, 2010. I think I remember that. And that's Mew Mew. 
All of this is from New Year's Spring 2024. So, her grandfather Mario Prada had founded the Prada Brothers, which was a leather goods shop in 1913. Her mother took over the family business in the 1950s. So she has seen women leading that company from very young. But when I was young, Prada told me I always wanted to be different. And she immersed herself with the activist generation of the 1960s. But she always loved the clothes. They were very distinctive. While everyone else was wearing jeans at the demonstrations, she very famously wore Yves Saint Laurent. Some people don't want to do what everyone else is doing. To have an idea of a woman as a beautiful silhouette, no, Prada said, I try to respect women. I try to be creative in a way that can be worn and can be useful. She is very much aware of her age. It's strange, she says, because every single morning I have to decide if I am a 15-year-old girl or an old lady near to death. Well, she could have another good 25 years in front of her. Prada is at heart a family business. as many of these fashion lines are. It seems very much so with, with them, their son being very actively involved and her husband as her partner. We're going to see an article eventually about a family who owns I'm not going to say everything, but they own a lot. The richest people in Europe that um, kind of have acquired things. They didn't necessarily build it, or Grandpa didn't build it, like in this case. They've just kind of sucked everything up with their money. It's coming. It's coming. It's a big magazine. Um, oh, this is, this is spring 2024. No, that's spring 2000. That's the grommets, yes. <laughs> We've seen that in the in the ads. All the different looks throughout the decades. That'll be your quiz. Which one's Mew Mew? Let's see if I can get it right. Top to bottom. Prada Spring 96. Mew Mew, Spring 2011, this is right. Prada, Spring 2024, look at that coat. Two thousand eight, two thousand fourteen. 2014. Mew Mew, <laughs> look at that's cute. Mew Mew. Is that now that I'm examining it? Sorry. I like to push, Prada says, because in the push you become more creative, more intelligent. I like her shoes. Hmm. I am better at working than talking. If I want to know somebody, I want to work with them. It's a way of really communicating a mindset and ideas. She says she thinks she'll be a good grandmother. She's been recently given that opportunity, a little girl. I will teach, but I will also be fun.
So here we have strength and numbers. And we have various female designers. Two models. This is for Carbon by Louise Trotter. This is The Row by Mary Kate and Ashley Olson. Two pretty coats. Very chic. Victoria Beckham. There's Victoria Beckham at home in London. Headed upstairs. Come to Garçon. Donatella Versace and Hathaway photographed by Annie Leibovitz. How beautiful is that? Now this is well done and it's a, it's from Seoul. It's a Seoul label. Dami Kwan and Jessica Jung. Well done. Victoria Beckham. Is one here. And Isabel Morant. We have the models fighting over a coat. Taylor Russell making her New York theater debut in The Effect, wears a Dior shirt and pants. Isn't that lovely? Black and white photo. And here we have Maria Grazia Churi for Dior. Virginie Viard for Chanel. And actress Phoebe Tonkin. And that is Louise Jacobson, photographed by Norman Jean Jean Roy. Sarah Burton and Alexander McQueen. Another Tomorrow Jacket and Pants by two female designers, Vanessa and Elizabeth. Gilda and Georgia for the Attico. They had no work experience in fashion studios when they launched this. A collection of retro slip dresses and boudoirish robes in 2016. They have become a celebrity favorite. Here we have a group of ladies. I struggle with the concept of a woman designer, says Diotima's Rachel Scott, which I think is that, because then that's all you are. Men can be geniuses, but women are collaborative. She's originally from Jamaica. Tori Birch dress worn by Emily Ratajkowski. Isn't that pretty? Having a cup of coffee at a diner. It's available at ToriBirch.com. And here we have them fighting over a coat again. We have Alberta Ferretti. And Gabriella Hurst. The fashion designers, not the models. And this is by WalesBonner.net. Designed by Grace Wales. Jacob, Jamaican, British designer. In October, with friend. Photographed by Annie Leibovitz. 
Ukrainian designer. Unstoppable is a word that de de describes her. Simon Roka. I don't know if I say her name right. Supriya Lay. Stella McCartney. Grace Wales Bonner. Try to make sure that I'm getting them right. Martine Rose and Phoebe Philo. Look at this color combination. So here's a design by Phoebe Philo. This is Hermes by a female designer. Look at that coat. Kamina Kamali for Chloe. Now we've come to a play that they are featuring that's on Broadway. It's Ibsen's An Enemy of the People. It was, uh, he wrote it uh, it was, I think, his. It was after the Dollhouse, which is what um, he, Ibsen is most known for. I mean, I think so. This is Jeremy Strong. This is a stage adaptation of that play. Uh, Arthur Miller made a 1950s version of it, and the couple that have made that, that this is who has adapted it now and they give the designers that they um are wearing the play sounds interesting this play an enemy of the people is an angry play ibsen wrote it in a fury of hurt and bewilderment after his 1881 play ghosts who is about a woman a whose son is dying of syphilis was met with a scathing response from virtually every quarter of Norwegian society. That doesn't sound very nice. So this is a 16 week Broadway run and Mr. Strong had, had just finished Succession and he wasn't sure he wasn't he wanted to take some time off, and it was during the um, strike, the SAG after strike. But this production pulled him out of yeah, semi-retirement, let's say. And he loved it so much, but the, the, the adaptation that they've created, that it beckoned him back to the stage. So 16 week run, I'm looking it up really quick. That's saying that it's one of the best revivals of the season. Where is it? Okay. It's June 23rd. And it seems like you can get tickets if you live, you know, if you are going to New York or if you live in New York. And it gets good reviews. Clever, entertaining, absorbing. I would go see it. I'll go see a play about anything. I love to go to plays. This is so interesting. I'll never be able to say this guy's name. He's cute. Petrit Hall Judge. I don't know. That's how you say it. He is having a major installation at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Isn't it lovely? So uh, many features of nature. His mantra is coexistence. And this extends to all manner of flora and fauna. This was in 2021. He was a child of war-torn Kosovo. And his work is exuberant and playful. That is their description of it. And he is an optimist. I think we get to have a peek at his installation. I think it's coming. I just loved this. It's rare to find art and an artist that is at once bitingly critical, 
and unabashedly hopeful, says curator Elena Philip Ovik. Look at the, the scale there. So this was in Mexico City. This is a drawing. When he was um, in a refugee camp in Albania as a child with a peacock and all these different colored trees. There's another huge installation. He's This one's quite famous. What comes first? This was in 2015 and it's chickens with a great big egg. This, is this at the one in, no, this is in Madrid. Look at the flowers. Oh. How he met his husband, who is also an artist. He danced up to him at a club and he said, are you the chicken guy? Nine years later, they married in a joyous celebration in their studio and home. It's wonderful. Life larger than life flowers. It reminds me of Prada, Conversations with a Flower, that campaign. This is Bob Marley. This this film, not these people, obviously. This is Kingsley ben -Adir. And Lashana Lynch again. She has a different dress on, though. She had on um, that black and white dress in the beginning. Painstaking preparation, a, a dose of afterly alchemy, transformed Kingsley into the reggae icon for this film, Bob Marley, One Love. I want to see it. My husband will definitely want to see it. He's the music lover. So it's out in theaters February 14th. And here's a scene from it. And look at that Gucci jacket. In our beautiful Ancora red. I thought this was, um, if you get this magazine, read this article. One of the movies... And this, this guy just stole my heart when he said this. The, one of the movies that he saw as a kid that he just, it made him want to, want to be an actor. And it's a very good movie. It's called In America. And it was from 2002. It's a drama. It's by Jim, Jim Sheridan. And it's about Irish people living in New York City. Um, it, it's a family and they don't have a lot of money, but he loved that movie and I did too. So I felt a little kinship uh, with him. I'm reading an, a, an a Irish author's novel now about family life too. So I think that made me, eh, especially maybe look twice at that. So this is Delphine Arnaud. She is in her first year as D Dior CEO. She's photographed by Annie Leibowitz. I'm going to assume she's wearing all Chanel or uh, Dior. Um, yes, of course, she's wearing Dior. She. This is a renovation under the flagship in Manhattan. She visited Dior with her father as a girl and it made her dream when she would go to these places. Here she is with her dad. She's a very young woman. Yeah. This is in 1991. That's going way back. That's at Paris Fashion Week. Her dad is, now somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but he's known as Europe's richest man. They have acquired a lot of... Uh, things that we see in these magazines. He, he acquired Tiffany, 
a couple years ago. He never stops, she says of her father. Seeing that as a child forms quite an impression, the dedication he gives to his work. They are close-knit and very private. He has parceled out the decision-making responsibilities over the future of LVMH, which he, uh, that's their company, to his five children. And that drew, that drew a little bit of attention. They try to stay private, but, you know, it would be hard. So that's that Moe, Moe Hennessy Louis Vuitton group. And it's the leading business in Europe, according to um, Delphine here. It encompasses more than 70 brands. Here she is with one of her brothers, a younger brother, Antoine. So as the CEO of Dior, she is the protector of a myth. Everything about it, the original gray and white color scheme, the oval-backed chairs, the references to the new look, the fabric printed with a map of the streets around the shop, is designed to inspire the sense that if you buy anything, this is genius, if you buy anything of Dior, you will own a piece of history. That's a beautiful photo. This is Annie Leibovitz, if I didn't say it. Here she is in Manhattan a few months ago. She worked with John Galliano at Dior as a young woman. He was also working on his JG label out of an old doll factory. Hmm. Really? night shift. Has the sun set on the evening dress? I don't know. A lot of people are wearing these little undies if they can get away with it. Yeah. Spring runways offered a lighter, brighter version of more formal dressing. They sure have. Look at that skirt. This is and a cat check in. A boxy Max Mara jacket and a J.W. Anderson skirt. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. The shorts are still in the cart. Neither are very cute. Let's take a look at this here. Oh, look at that. How sleek is that? Top and pants from Revlon. Who's the partner here? Samuel. Akir wears an O-U-E-R -O polo. And then up here we have Louis Vuitton and Givenchy. Hermes pants. Oh, how oh, pretty. Giorgio Armani, over optic white Schiaparelli pants. This is cute. And it's all Gucci, if you want to wear it. Go to the beach. And they're cute. Michael Kors collection, but the shoes are Provenza Schuller. Ooh, that is sleek looking, isn't it? And the Ralph Lauren collection. And look at the red lip. Well, we all know what that is, right? Gucci in that Encore red. So what is this, maximum capacity? This is about big bags. It's Emily Radajkowski. 
and she's going to give these big babes a real-world stress test. Long a source of quiet shame, the big messy bag has been reclaimed as a marker of modern womanhood. Good. All in boots. Big from the wave. And of course the Gucci jacket. And look at we got a babe here. Little bunny rabbit. I think we're gonna see more of the little babe. Coach, bag, new mute top, skirt. Cute. I like it. I like it. Fendi. Kaikina. Ferragamo. Little red bags, big red bags, top by Louie. Mew Mew bag. And the dress, is is it Acne Studios? Is it? Louie bag. Cartier watch just hanging there. Just hanging. Hope it doesn't get lost. Ortega Veneta with the weave. All in top. Michael Kors collection skirt. Oh, look at the green. This bag is from The Row. With the yellow pocketbook inside by Ralph Lauren. Polo. Ferragamo jacket. Marnie pants. Look at all the stuff. What's she been up to here? Money, candy, a cherry. Hmm. A play um, program, some Loewe shoes, a watch, charger, credit card, a lot of cherries. I would afraid, be afraid they would get smushed in my fancy bag, my fancy Hermes bag. And here she is just dumping everything out. She's got on an H&M bodysuit, but with a Bottega Veneta skirt. Now that's really mixing it up, isn't it? I think that's the same Hermes handbag. I think this is the same. This is after she dumped it, I think. I don't know. So here we have Devin Garcia in Miami Beach with mom and her little sister. How sweet. How sweet. The hat here is Louis Vuitton. I had to read for a minute. Um, Mom wears a Dries Van Norton dress. And this is a Zankoff dress. It's all available at Bergdorf Goodman. Jones Stone Crab, but with different bottoms. Jones Stone Crab bibs. I thought they were shirts. inside a shark. I love those floral pants. A lot of these by Eras and Free People. Here they are at a surf shop. They have some sunglasses on a statue with a bird on top. These are Loewe sunglasses. This is a Dolce & Gabbana swimsuit with an Hermes towel. And that's an Hermes bag that that fruit's in. I've seen it on their site, I'm pretty sure. So let's look at the, the get. It's one of my favorite parts of Vogue. 
Hope for Flowers Pants. Never heard of it. $111, but don't they look comfortable? I want a pair. Studio 189 hat for $180. That's pretty. That pretty necklace. Harwell Godfrey necklace from Net a Porter. .com. Ghani dress G A N N I four hundred and seventy five. A pink jacket. S V D O. E S C V D O. It's nine hundred dollars. It's by special order. This ring is available at Neiman Marcus. Ooh, Zine Shoes, Z-Y-N-E, or 10. At ZineOfficial.com. Pretty. There was one at Farfetch.com. Hunting Season Bag. Three ninety five at huntingseason.com. Mizuki earrings, $750. They're very summery, aren't they? Mizukijewels.com. Vita Kin mini dress, 330 Johanna Ortiz skirt, five fifty at matchesfashion.com. A brother, Billy's shoe, isn't that wonderful? With a big flower, and that is five ninety five. And yet, that feature is um, so prominent. How it wraps at least two or three times with a thin leather strap. Here's the continuation of our articles. Got a lot of lovely shoes coming up at last look. These are Dior ballet inspired flats. I love the color. It's got a square toe box. Well, they're silk satin. And they kind of look like ballet shoes, but with a pearl dangle. That is exquisite. The H&M ants have Vittoria Soretti. H&M Studio. This blazer is $249. The earrings are great, aren't they? I'm in love with these shoes. I would never be able to afford them. I had to look them up, though. I just think they're the prettiest things in the world. They're about $1,000. The little slipper, oh, I just, I think they're just exquisite. So this coat is three sixty nine. Your brother fellas again. Oh, aren't those pretty? A beautiful pink. It's a Mary Jane flat with a heart shaped Swarovski crystal buckle. It says it's Pepto pink. <laughs> and these are Prada. They're these are the orange counterpart for the green shoes that we saw in the beginning, the boxy sat satin slide back at the um, product end. This, these shorts are $249. The jeans are $99. This is Hermes, and it's the Cali Slingback with a big, Palladium plated oversized Kelly bag buckle. And here we have Victoria again. This was photographed in California in the hills. The skirt is $99. These are from Chanel. How 
how beautiful with the double C logo. A brilliantly embellished ballet flat. This dress is $129. So here is the Chanel ad. We're finally at the end. And this is high jewelry. So, I mean, it's not for sale. But you can read about it. They have created jewelry using elements of the Chanel number no. five bottle to celebrate the hundredth year of that bottle, I think. <laughs> it's celebrating a hundred years, I'm pretty sure, of the bottle. In this necklace, which I, I'd say it's a million dollars, I don't know, but that it might even be 10, who knows? The middle diamond is 55.55 carats, a lot of fives. This is celebrating the bottle. There's another necklace where you go on Chanel high jewelry that is similar to this. It's high jewelry, it, it will be not for sale. It celebrates the flowers. Another element that they celebrate is the stopper. The number five. Also, they will be become part of the Maison collection. When I got this magazine out of the library, I must have been holding it like this. My mom saw the back and she said, oh my gosh, look at that necklace. And to be honest with you, I didn't really think twice because I maybe I was in a hurry. And then I brought it home and I laid it on a table. And my son, my younger son said, he picks it up and he says, oh my gosh, look at that necklace. And it's true. I was maybe in too much of a, frenzy in my life with whatever I was doing, uh, unpacking fancy feast boxes or something for my cat. I mean, it's something else. They had a point, didn't they? It's pretty nice. So we got through the whole magazine and my son is here with his dog. So I gotta go. I gotta go be grandma. Thank you for watching.